and welcome to Code Next Door. My name is Andre. My name is Chris. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about shrucks in Common Lisp. So a shruct is essentially a name record. And a record, it, you could think of it as just a collection of fields and values. So how do you create a shruct in Common Lisp? Well, we use this thing called defstruct. Uh, and defstruct accepts a couple of parameters. The first parameter defstruct accepts is the name of the structs you want to correct, uh, create. And then the subsequent parameters are like either a symbol or it can be a list of this form. So if we wanted to create a country struct, a struct that represents a country, say we have a name, a GDP, and a language for a country, this is a syntax that we would use in common list to create that country. So when we evaluate this, the list machine tells us that we have a country struct available to us. Now, with that country struct, we get a couple of different magical utilities that we're going to take a look at. We automatically get a constructor function. Uh, and this function, when you call it, it creates a country structure. So if we call that function, we get a list. Uh, and it has the syntax in front of it, the hashtag s to kind of represent this is a structure, not just any regular list. Then we get the name of the structure, country. And similar to languages like Elixir, we have this kind of keyword uh, field access going on. So we get the field name and then the value for that field. So we have the field name name, the field name GDP, and the field name language. If we want to access the values of those fields, well, we automatically get accessor functions from common Lisp. So if we create a country, let's say Wakanda, uh, and say we want to get the country name out of the new struct Wakanda that we just create, we can use country name and we get Wakanda. Say we create Wakanda again, let's make the GDP bread and let's make the language Wakandan. And say we want to get the GDP out of that new struct well, this is how we do that. We use the country GDP function. So important thing to note is that for every field that you pass to the def struct uh, macro, so name, GDP, and language, there are ac accessor functions that are created. So there's a country name, there's a country GDP, and there's a country language function that you can use to actually get those things out. Yeah, so we have more uh, things we can do with trucks. Um, we have this inheritance notion. If we go back and kind of redefine how we defined our country and change name to be country name, um, let's say we want to define a state on top of our country struct, meaning we have all of the things that come included with the country, uh, but then we want to add some more stuff to that. So let's say we wanted to say we have a state name in addition to the country struct. This is how we would do that. Uh, start with defstruct, give it a list, where the first thing in your list is the symbol that represents the name of your struct, and then you pass it the options. And we do a colon include keyword option, and then pass it the name of the struct that you want to include on top of, and then pass it the, the key the fields like you would with the regular struct. And when you do that, you get access to the accessor and constructor functions, just like you do um, previously. So we have the state state name function now, and we have the make state function. Now, if you try to make a country and then pass it a state name, it doesn't really know what this is. It's like unknown key argument. We don't really know what that is. So you'll have to uh, be sure to pass the correct arcs to the correct function. And that's essentially structs and common lists. There's a lot more in common lists when it comes to these ideas of object orientation. Uh, we'll cover that in a follow-up video. But for now, that that is structs.